Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. The topic of this video is here at the whole picture. I've been doing a lot of work, uh, as you can see in our videos with our multiple channel room, uh, 8.4 system. So a lot of channels, lots of energy, and I've noticed a lot of different things about it. Uh, it's kind of nice because with two channel, you know, when I've been in two channel for 50 years, so I don't want to say I, I have heard everything two channel has to offer, but I think I've heard about 95% of it. So multiple channel sources give you a lot more things to think about, a lot more uh, different things that you're hearing. So what I've really come to realize uh, with the theaters, screen size versus sound size. We have a size of a screen, which is the video presentation value, and then we have the audio side. And there has to be a, a synergy between the two. There has to be a connection between the two. A lot of theaters I go into, the video looks good, the audio's horrible. The audio's not too bad and the video screen's too small. There's not a lot of thought uh, put into, you know, synergizing both of them together. So you have to have a, a sound scale that's equal in presentation value to it, these 8K screens. I mean, we have an 8K screen in our studio here. The resolution is amazing. I mean, it's really baffling. It, it just takes your breath away. So we want, we want to try to merge the resolution of the audio and the scale of the audio with the resolution, the increased resolution of the 8K screen. Do we have 8K audio? We definitely have 8K video. So a lot of cases, I don't think it's the case. You gotta scale it right. Must be high resolution audio because of the screen. Here's the thing I've been noticing too, bringing a lot of people in for demos. Video seems to trump audio, meaning if the video screen's on and I'm talking to the people that are sitting in the demo chair, they're not listening to me. They're watching the screen, so I shut the screen off. And immediately, I, they listen to me or whatever audio system is being played. So video, for some reason, with the human uh, being, really takes precedent over audio. So you have to take that into consideration and realize that the video is gonna grab a lot of attention. So 8K, definitely, with that kind of resolution, and I'm sure there's higher resolutions coming down the road. but People seem to really focus on the visual aspects. I don't, obviously. I focus on the audio part. If I had to lose one of my senses, I would lose sight and keep my hearing. People ask me that all the time, but I, I hear a lot and, and I know what those sounds mean. And, and people that probably don't spend as much time in audio as I do would, would take you know the visual side of that equation. But the audio must be two to three times better than the video. It really has to be. It has to be big in scope, big in nature, big in presentation value. Low frequency management is a must because the theaters are all about, you know, crashes and explosions. And if you don't have the right attack and decay rates, when you have a crash and explosion and it happens, you can't hear dialogue. If the harmonic tail is so long in the room, you're not going to be able to hear the dialogue right after it. And I've been watching some movies and, you know, with the special effects and the dialogue is pretty close to being mixed in with the explosions and the car crashes. So you got to be able to articulate in, in, in room resolution with acoustic treatment. So we have to have high rates of uh, levels of absorption because we have to have a really strong attack and decay rates. We got to feel the impact of the explosion and the crash and then it's got to get out of the way so we can have some dialogue, right? Diffusion is, is uh, really important in theaters. Rear wall, ceiling, two surface areas that we've used it constantly with clients and seem to get uh, great, results, uh, great results with it. So that's a, a thing that you have to do. And this signal processing today, I mean, this Dolby Atmos system with this moving audio where, where the engineer can locate sounds and any particular spot in the room if, if there's a speaker there. It's amazing and we're looking forward to our new facility where we're actually going to do a full-blown Atmos system. Uh, we have, I would say, 75% of that here in this studio, 
but we're going to put it in the ceiling in our new facility. So hopefully we get 20 foot ceilings in order to be able to do that. So here are the whole picture. We want to make sure that we're matching the audio to our video presentation because it's a tough job. It's tough competing with 8K. So the only way you're going to do that is to treat the room and, and get everything in the room balanced. Get the attack and decay rates in the low end adjusted accordingly. Get reverberation times managed throughout the room and distributed evenly throughout the room. So here are the whole picture. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.